Okay, so today we're going to be looking at solving simultaneous equations, but this time one of the equations is nonlinear. And by nonlinear, I just mean isn't involving just a number times x and a number times y. We have, for example, x squareds, y squareds, or we could have square roots, anything that isn't just a simple linear equation. So if you think back to the ways that we can solve simultaneous equations, we can do substitution or we could do elimination. But we can't really use elimination in this case because we can't scale one equation by number to get x squared or y squared. That's the nonlinear part of this uh, problem. So what we're going to have to do is use substitution. We want to rearrange, for example, the first equation to get something in just terms of x or y and then substitute it into the second equation. This is how we're going to solve this. I just want to first make a quick remark about what solving this equation actually means. What does this mean geometrically? So we can graph what these equations look like. And the second one, this is actually the equation of a circle. It isn't too important that you know this, but this is the equation of a circle centered around zero, of radius one. That's an awful circle. Um, <laughs> the first equation is just an equation of a straight line. It's gonna look something like this. It's not too important. But now, as you can see from the diagram, we're gonna have two places of intersection. So these equations should give us two separate solutions. Okay, so let's start off by rearranging the first equation. We've just got a y on its own, so this is going to be the nicest thing to uh, isolate. So if we move the 2x onto the other side, we get y is equal to 1 minus 2x. Let me just label this as equation number 3. Okay, so now we want to substitute the third equation, which is identical to the first equation, into the second equation. So I'll just write substitute 3 into 2. So we keep track of what we're doing. So this is going to give us x squared plus y squared, but now we're saying y is equal to this, so 1 minus 2x squared, and this is equal to 1. So now we've eliminated y, and we can solve this um, to just find our x's. So if we expand these brackets out here, we're going to get 1 minus 4x by multiplying 1 and minus 2x and minus 2x and 1. That's going to give us minus 4x, and also when we multiply minus 2x by itself, we'll get 4x squared, and this is still equal to 1. So we can just simplify this a bit by collecting the terms. We'll get 5x squared minus 4x, and you can see that the 1s just cancel out. We can just subtract by 1 on both sides. So this is going to be equal to 0. Okay, I'm running out of space, so let me just move everything up here. And you can see that both terms involve an x. So this is a quadratic equation, but there's no constant term, which makes it a lot easier to solve. We can just factorize an x out. So I'm just going to take an x out here, out the front, and we're left with 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. And now to solve this, we just consider each term what would happen if we set it equal to 0. That's how we solve this equation. And if we just take the x at the front, if x is equal to 0, this obviously is true, so x is equal to 0 is a solution. And also if we set this bracket equal to 0, this is going to satisfy this equation. And if we do this, we're going to get x is equal to 4 over 5. So you can check this by substituting in. The 5s will cancel out, and we'll get 4 minus 4, which is 0. Okay, so we've worked out two values of x that satisfy this equation, and now the second part of the problem is to work out what the corresponding values of y um, that make both these equations true. So what we're going to do is substitute these values here into just equation number 3. That's the simplest form uh, that we've written y in, so it's going to be the easiest way to work out what y is. So if we substitute x is equal to 0 into here, we see that the minus 2x term, that just vanishes. So we're just going to get y is equal to 1. That's the first solution. So write it like this. And now if we substitute x is equal to 4 over 5, if we substitute this in, it's a bit more complicated. But if you do the algebra, we're going to get y is equal to minus 3 over 5. That's not too hard to work out, but I'll just save some time. So this is also the second solution. And a convenient way you can write this in to make it a bit clearer is use coordinate, no coordinate notation. So we have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. That's the first solution. And the second solution is x is equal to 4 over 5 and y is equal to minus 3 over 5. It's important that these values of x and y go together. We can't just swap them about. Because now these solutions correspond to the coordinates of where these graphs intersect. So you can see that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. 
this corresponds to this point up here, and 4 over 5 and minus 3 over 5, this roughly corresponds to this point up here. Okay, so let's do one more example. We're going to do x plus y is equal to 9, and x times y is equal to 30. So these are two equations, and the bottom one here is nonlinear because you can't just scale it by a number. We have x times y, which makes it a little bit more complicated. So let me just label these equations as equation 1 and equation 2. So like before, you could sketch this out and get an idea of what the solutions are. I'm not going to do this this time. It's a bit harder to sketch this graph. Um, but the method we use to solve this is exactly the same. We're going to use substitution. So we want to rearrange one of these, one of these variables on their own and then just substitute this into the second equation. So let's rearrange for y. We're going to do y is equal to 9 minus x. So let's write this as equation 3, and this is identical to equation 1. So now to eliminate the value of y, we're going to substitute y from this equation into equation number 2. So I'll just write sub substitute 3 into number 2. Okay, what do we get if we put y is equal to 9 minus x into this equation? We're going to get x from that, uh, we haven't changed, and then y, which we're saying is 9 minus x, and this is equal to 30 from equation 2. So now we have a, a quadratic equation, in fact, which only involves x, which is what we want. So we can solve this using our standard quadratic techniques. Okay, so let's expand this out. We're going to get 9x minus x squared is equal to 30, and if we can put everything onto one side, we'll get x squared minus 9x is equal to uh, plus sorry plus 30 is equal to zero so i've just moved everything onto the right hand side and now we've got a quadratic equation which is equal to zero okay to solve this let's go up here to free up some more space and this equation doesn't actually factorize very nicely so we're going to use the method of completing the square to work out the solutions so to do this we just write x minus 9 divided by 2 we take this coefficient and we divide it by 2 then we square this, and we need to subtract off what this term squared would be. So uh, 81 over 4, that's 9 over 2 squared. And then we still have the plus 30 is equal to 0 from before. So now let's move these numbers onto the right-hand side. We'll get x minus 9 over 2 squared. This is equal to 81 over 4 minus 30. We can write 30 as um, 120 over 4. So this simplifies as minus 39 over 4, I think. Um, but it doesn't really matter because now we see that we've got a negative number. So we've got a square term on the left-hand side and we have a negative number. So if we wanted to solve this, we'd have to take the square root. But we can't take the square root of a number, a negative number. That doesn't give us any real solutions. So the answer to this problem um, isn't a very nice one, but it's just that there's no real solutions. And that happens sometimes when you're dealing with non-linear cases because this could be a graph that never intersects this um, straight line. So the answer to this problem is no real solutions.